Well, everybody, it's Catherine Toon, and I am going to talk today about finding your place of rest. And I'm kind of amused because it's, um, well, pretty much everything I talk about is because it's ministered to me. Uh, but I found myself in a, in a place where I just was having such a hard time resting. Uh, so I guess it's time for Catherine to get an upgrade uh, in uh, this whole rest piece. I was taking on burdens that weren't mine, responsibilities that weren't mine. Uh, my mind was just kind of um, perseverating over like, and I, and it wasn't like I was trying to, like I was driving it. At least my conscious mind wasn't driving it, put it this way, because I know better. But I was just having a really hard time handing it to Jesus and really entering that place of rest. So, yay. Um, so if you're struggling, yay, welcome to the human race um, and welcome to the place where God helps us all uh, be able to enter that place of rest. Isn't that just a great word? Like that just might make you happy. Uh, we all need rest and we all need to be able to operate from rest as sons and daughters of God. And most often when we're having a hard time resting, it's just like this internal world. We have internal drivers that are driving us. Usually it's fear of some flavor, right? Uh, and you know, the anxiety, and sometimes it's, you could, it's definable anxiety and sometimes it's sort of undefined anxiety, but this is an opportunity for us to go inward with God inside us and go inward with us inside us. Right. <laughs> and, and, and really get a sense of what is, what is driving me? What is the driver? right? What is, what is my deal? <laughs> um, and I think so many times we're looking outward for a place of rest and we're looking for a source, right? Outward. So we're, we're looking for something that'll make us feel better or whatever. And, and, you know, um, that's not totally wrong, uh, but our real place of rest is inside us. You know what? You can all ha have all hell breaking loose and like, be at peace. I mean, set I in the midst of the storm, right? Because that's that place of you and Jesus. Jesus said, um, you know, in this world, you will have tribulation. This is heavy duty, not rest stuff, <laughs> right? But cheer up, I have overcome the world. So in his overcoming, this is an eternal overcoming. This is a, an established overcoming. This is a finished overcoming. And so we enter his overcoming because we're one with him. And so this is him and us and us and him. So really it's our deal. And sometimes, you know, when we're having a problem with this and, you know, we're, we're mad because we're like, you know, um, well, you don't know what I'm going through. And well, of course I can't rest. And you know, I was like, and, you know, and, and, and God is so kind. Have you noticed? If you haven't noticed, go inside <laughs> and he'll be like, what's your problem? And it will like, <laughs> and because what he's doing with us, I love God so much. He's totally, he totally nabs us on our stuff. Right. Um, uh, he's saying, well, actually, no, it's because you've, you've gotten, you've allowed yourself to get out of the place of your oneness with me of my love for you, of my hugeness, of my masterfulness. And you've made it about something temporal as if this big fat, hairy fear, this anxiety is bigger than this place of you and me. It's like, yeah, dang it. I did it again. <laughs> isn't it good that in Christ there's no condemnation like he's not condemning you he's just kind of napping you on your beef like and and I, I love that because I mean I knew it was me like I yeah of course it's me right because if we're in in the place of tribulation well cheer up I've overcome the world like be happy I, yeah there's tribulation yeah but in the midst when all hell is breaking loose 
but I'm here. I'm bigger. I'm bigger. I'm bigger. And he's with you. So it's going to be okay. I don't know how it's going to be okay. But it's going to be okay. And that's really what we need to know, right? We we don't need to know. He does not need to outline to us the 25 ways that it's going to be okay and the pathway. And this is what you need to do. And this is the next thing. And we having it all figured out because that's us trying to take control when we feel out of control. Having to have it all explained to us, right? And so we can just take our place. You know, we can spend some time going internally inside where he is to enter our rest, to enter his rest. You know, Jesus is not in heaven in you, by the way. <laughs> um bringing his hands about our big fat hairy deals like you know it's it's um every time we kind of have election season right every single one is like it's the end of the world you know <laughs> it's like yeah it's been the end of the world kind of since the fall really and we do tend to be drama kings and drama queens and i'm not saying that serious things aren't happening i, I am not in la la land i'm just saying in the context of a god who loves every single one of his kids the the moderately pathological ones and the unsteroids pathological ones okay um, in all our brokenness and all the ways that we express it and insist on, on, on perpetuating violence against ourselves and one another. In all those ways, there is a rest because he is bigger. And I think sometimes our, 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 our problem is, is that we're so angry at God for not working it out the way that we thought it, it should be worked out, you know, and he has compassion in our pain. So let's be very clear, but he's there in our pain. He's there in all the ways that we think it, he should be moving and it doesn't look like he's moving and what, where are you God and all that kind of stuff, that delusion of humanity that points an accusing finger at goodness itself himself, herself, right? Um, and says, yeah, I would be better than you, right? Um, and the truth is we don't have all the information to make that judgment. And in the place where we insist on making these judgments, we suffer torment. And so God is kind of, yeah, pointing out our crap to us. Aren't you glad? Oh, I love being diagnosed with my crap <sighs> because healing my crap, it's healable. And then I can get upgraded, right? Right. And so I'm leaning into it. Thank you. Oh, thank you for showing me my crap. You see, you got to get into the place of understanding there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus, right? So he's not condemning you in your crap, but he is telling you what your crap is. So we can heal your crap. You can be cleansed of your crap. You can be delivered of your crap. <sighs> There's nothing better than being delivered of your own crap. And then you can get resettled. Okay, I, I guess I just, you know, I spooled myself up. I, I was spending too much time looking at all these potential things. It's been the end of the world since the world started. Okay, really? Right? You know? It's been the end of the world ah, and we're all <laughs> just settle down. That's awesome, Robert. Love you. Okay. That was my son. He's going for his walk. Just so you know, <laughs> even though I told him I was recording my podcast, he was going to announce it. <laughs> so everybody say, hey, have a great walk, Robert. Robert's so awesome. So we're talking about finding a place of rest. All right. I actually have scripture, <laughs> but I, that was my opening. 
uh, monologue there. It was a good monologue though, wasn't it? Like so good. So like, it could be so happy, right? Um, I'm going to go to uh, Hebrews 4. We're going to read this in the Passion Translation because this is talking about entering the rest because this, we have to understand that this is a thing, right? This is, a, this is actually a thing. That scripture points to this thing and it's a really good thing. And I, 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 I'm, I, I'm saying this because it's something bigger than ourselves that God spoke to humanity through uh, scripture that points to who he is, who is eternal. Ready? I, I hope you, you may not have followed exactly why I said what I said, but it was really good. And it's okay if you didn't catch it. But anyway, let's go to uh, Hebrews 4, uh, Passion Translation, um, verse 3. For those of you, uh, those of us who believe, faith activates the promise and we experience the realm of confident rest. So you can have rest and be confident in your rest, right? You're not confident like all the circumstances are going to go the way you want them to, that there actually will be no loss or pain because there is loss and pain. We will have tribulation, right? But he has overcome the world. That's where we can be confident. For he has said, past tense, I was grieved with them and made a solemn oath. They will never enter into the calming rest of my spirit. Okay, so this is, he was kind of talking about the Israelites who were kind of rebellious, right? And, um, you know, and and it's grievous. Like when you're rebelling against goodness, it's like, he's not grieved because he's so impatient and disgusted with them. He's grieved because of people insisting on making choices that are going to harm themselves, right? Does that mean he doesn't love them? No. Does that mean he leaves them? Absolutely not. It's impossible. But it does mean that while I will bear with them in their crappy choices that are going to harm themselves or harm and other people, right? That they're not, they're refusing to partake of me. And that just never turns out well. Okay. Um, They will never enter into the calming rest of my spirit. Will enter into the calming rest of his spirit. Yeah. Well, if you rebel against that, it's just not going to go well. So there's an invitation where, you know, where we insist on acting in our own way with our, with our own mindset. Maybe we're just honestly ticked off at God or something, or we think we might know better or some other stupid scenario. Okay. Well, you're, you're taking yourself out of the calming rest of, of um, his spirit. It says God's works have been have all been completed from the foundation of the world. Ooh. Okay, let's think here. Okay, so it's finished before he created the world. It was finished because he's a lamb slain before the foundation of the world. So he might just have this thing in hand. For it says in the scriptures, verse four, on the seventh day, God rested from all his works. So God's works was in this creative realm, creating the seen realm. And on the seventh day, you know, in that, um, in, 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 in the, the creation story, the creation allegory that, that probably um, uh, talks about truth, but is not like a verbatim literal thing. Okay. Um, and God entered, God rested. So God is resting while he's working. And as sons and daughters, he call, calls us to rest. He's bringing us into rest while we work. We can whistle while we work. Do, 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 do. Okay, sorry, that was not good. But I'm glad you love me anyway. Okay, let's keep going. All right, verse eight. Now, if this uh, promise of rest was fulfilled when Joshua brought the people into the land, God wouldn't have spoken later of another rest yet to come. This is just context, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time explaining that context. Um, so we conclude there is still a full and complete rest, full and complete, robust rest waiting for believers to experience. So guess what rest is waiting for you? <laughs> experience me. I'm here to be experienced. And you're not experiencing it because you insist on spooling off in your mind. Now, 
maybe in your place of pain, it's hard to rest. But you know what? In in that, you can be comforted. You can be comforted. Okay. That was, I believe that was what I recorded last week, right? It's about comfort. Mm -hmm. As we enter God's faith, rest, life, we cease from our own works. Oh, isn't that, I'm so glad. Like Catherine ceasing from her own works is just a good idea. Thank you, God, for thinking of it, right? And for you thinking, uh, ceasing from your own works. It's just a good idea. Thank you, God, for thinking of it. Okay. Just as God celebrates his finished works and rests in them. Ha. Huh. So he's saying, I finished this. What a great job I did. Pat, pat, pat. I'm God, Father, Holy Spirit, right? Um, yay us. <laughs> and we're resting. And we're engaging with our beloved kids on the inside on the inside out hi i'm here yeah you're kind of dumber than a rock there love you in your cluelessness i'm here i'm here to help you come rest come rest you can rest why are you toiling why are you why is it oh you think you're separate you think you're bad you think there's catastrophe around every corner you're thinking that i can't pull this off you're thinking that you're separate you're thinking that you're all by yourself you're thinking that you got to figure it out. You're thinking that you you got to work it out and and do all this stuff in order to make things okay. But you're okay. Rest in me. I really got this thing. Mm. So then we must give our all and be eager to experience this faith, rest, life, so that no one falls short by following the same pattern of doubt and unbelief. So what are we doubting and unbelieving? We're doubting and unbelieving that God is good. That God is present, that God's in us, that God's in every single human being that he created. Why? Because he's his father, whether they know it or not. This is an issue of knowing it or not, right? This is an issue of us knowing it or not, right? That he's working all things together for our good. Yeah, that he's really got this thing. Yeah, and that he's helping us grow in the knowledge of him, helping heal our hearts where we've been bruised, battered, shattered, blah, 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 pick a card, Eddie card, right? That he's kind, that love never fails, and that he's love, and that he's in us, and that we're one with him, and that we're created in the image and likeness, that we're good because he's good, but we do a lot of bad. Yeah, we do a lot of crap. And so he's calling, he's working us, conforming us, all of these things. <sighs> he's really got this thing <sighs> that it's going to be okay. Hallelujah. So then we must cling in faith to all we know to be true. What do you know to be true? What do you know? Okay. That means we need to pause and go deep. What do I know to be true? What do I know to be true? Yeah. You know, as I, as I, as I counsel people, and some people are at different levels of jacked upness than that kind of thing. And I, I'm I'm at different levels of jacked upness. So it's a level playing ground. <laughs> it's called mm, humanity being conformed into the image of Christ. Okay. So um, if people will pause and get past their crap, their things they know to be true. Sometimes in our offense against god we like accuse him right we do this right well it's like no what do you know to be true okay yeah get get over yourself what do you know yeah i guess that's a good guess go with your guess that he's good that he loves you that he's one with you that you're not separate this is bringing you into your right mind in the midst of oh the sky's falling right for we have a magnificent king priest. Now, let me unpack that. Number one, he's magnificent. That means he's beautiful. And he's huge. And he's magnanimous. He's generous. And he's bigger than your big, fat, hairy deal. And he's gorgeous. And he's one with you. And you look just like him in your flavor. Oh, okay. There's That's just magnificent there. King priest. That means he rules over. He's the head honcho. He's the honcho of honchos who goes, who dives deeper than the hellish stuff of human existence 
to redeem it. And priest, he's the one that ministers the ability to connect with himself because we all think, hello, hello, knock, 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 that we're separate. Are the, the hellhole of separateness. And who is this? This is Jesus Christ, Jesus the Christ, the Savior, the Son of God, who rose to the heavenly realm for us because humanity lost its way, right? So he said, okay, I'll become one. I'll sign up. I'm, I've already signed up. I knew you were going to do this. Oh, my. And he rose up to the heavenly realm to bring us with him. It, the In Christ, the humanity in Christ experience to bring us with him. And now he's like, hello, you're up here. What are you? Okay, we're up here in heavenly places in your mind because he's in you, right? And now sympathizes with us in our frailty. So in your pain point, he's like, yeah. I'm here. I'm here in your pain. I'm here in your delusion. I'm here in your insistence on being stupid. I'm here. I'm here in the place of your accusation against me, against yourself, against someone else. I'm here in your bitterness. I'm here in your aloneness. I'm here in your shattered brokenness. I'm here where you can't help yourself. Hi, I'm the helper. I'm here, right? He understands humanity. Ding, da, ding, ding. Okay, for as a man, our magnificent king priest was tempted in every way as we are and conquered sin, right? Right, he was tempted in every way. So what's the way that you're tempted now? Yeah, he gets it. He was tempted, right? He was tempted to commit suicide, right? Throw yourself off the pinnacle, right? Okay, right, okay. Um, so now we come freely and boldly to where love is enthroned. Ah, <laughs> so we come freely and boldly like, come on, baby, be free and boldly. Why he's there. He's the kindest eyes you will ever see. He's the most compassionate eyes you will ever see. These are pools of liquid love. He's the safest person on the planet. Come boldly, right? To where love is enthroned. Love, the person who never fails, by the way. Now, faith, hope, and love are made in the greatest of Jesus love, right? Love never fails. He's enthroned. He's already conquered it all. He's already conquered death, hell, and the grave. He's already conquered that big, fat, hairy deal that you think is going to take you out, right? To receive mercy's kiss, oh, you receive a kiss from mercy. Mercy. Why? Because you've acted like an idiot and so have I. <laughs> you've insisted on stupid and so have I. You've yielded to things that have defiled and so have i level playing grounds called humanity you've run away from love you've run away from light you've embraced darkness right you've embraced delusion we've all done we've all fallen short of the glory of god okay right to receive mercy's kiss he's merciful we've all been the prodigal son You've ended up in the pig pen, right? And we've all been the elder brother who sit there in judgment of everyone else because they didn't do it like we thought we ought to do it. So we're going to judge them. And we've been it all. And so mercy is here to kiss you. I think mercy loves you. Yeah. And understand we do stupid, right? And discover the grace we urgently need. That is an urgency. We need grace urgently to strengthen us in our time of weakness. Sometimes, honestly, we literally cannot help ourselves. So guess what? The helper comes. Yay. Well, the helper's here. Sorry, I the wrong language. Sorry, let me change that. The helper's here and presents himself, herself. Hi, I'm here to help. Okay. Yeah, you can't help yourself. You know what? There are times... I like to use this analogy. It's such a silly analogy, but it speaks to me. So maybe it'll speak to you. There are times like I I, I actually, the way my um, personality is, I'm actually a task um, person, right? I just, I like to get stuff done. I like to be productive. 
And this can be good and this can be really not good, right? If I get my identity from it, not good. If I just operate out of my daughtership in rest to get stuff done, to help, to contribute, to do my part, then it's good, right? Okay. So there are times when I'm so in my task that I just get overtired and I'm not being wise. And then I get out of rest and I'm pushing too hard or whatever. And I just get overtired or sometimes honestly broadsides me, something happens and I get tired, you know, maybe I'm sick or whatever. Well, I'm not always tracking with my, like my status. Right. And, um, and so there are times when really the, the greatest thing that I can do is go to bed. Catherine, you just need to go to bed. But sometimes I can't see it. I'm like just pushing and pushing and pushing and like I'm not productive and I'm like delusional, whatever. And I just need someone to put me to bed, just like a parent, like you're overtired. You need to go to bed, right? <laughs> so God will be like, um, Catherine, I mean, my husband will suggest, right? Catherine, I think you're tired. Don't you need to go to bed? It's like, well, I'll be there in a bit, whatever. I'm cranky. <laughs> and God will be like, honey, I just need to go to bed. And as I literally need him to put me to bed, tuck me into bed, got my jammies on, go to bed, right? And this is him strengthening me, her strengthening me in my time of weakness. Why? Because you know what? That stuff will be there. Hey, take no thought for tomorrow, right? Today is enough trouble. Why are you future tripping with tomorrow stuff? No, today is much trouble of its own. Okay, we're tucking in today. We're tucking you in. Okay, time to be tucked in and I get mercy's kiss, okay, to tuck me into bed. And now I understand this is a mild thing, but it speaks to me and it may speak to you. There's probably things in your own heart and your own mind that you're, you need to tuck it into bed. Just tuck it into bed. Today is enough. Jesus, I hand to you climate change. I hand to you the future of the free world. I hand to you, um, you know, cancer and death. And I hand to you my pain. It is too much. I hand to you my pick a card, any card. <laughs> you can tuck me into bed, right? Yeah. And you know what? It's a beautiful thing to enter God's rest, to have the invitation to enter God's rest. I'm going to read one more scripture and then we're going to be done. Let me make sure I get at the right one. We're going to go to, to a Psalm 23. I have no idea what this lower hand is. <laughs> Sorry. For those of you who are listening on the podcast, you have no idea what I'm talking about, but that's okay. It's a technology thing. Okay. Uh, let's go to Psalm 23, verse one. Uh, this makes me smile just looking at it. Oh my God, smile with me. Okay, the Lord is my best friend and my shepherd. Okay, so he's one with you. Your best friend is one with you and he's a shepherd. And guess what? Shepherd, shepherd guide stupid sheep. Stupid, adorable, precious sheep. They need guidance. I need guidance in my stupid yet adorable and my preciousness, I need guidance, right? And so do you. I always have more than enough. He offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. It's love. And it's not just a little dab. It's luxurious. You can luxuriate in his love, in her love. And he offers it to you. Honey, just come, 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 come. Yeah. And yeah, rest. It's okay. Take a break already. <laughs> um, he tracked, he tracked, oh, his track. Sorry, I couldn't read this. <laughs> I've got some really weird font stuff going on. His tracks take me to the oasis of peace, the quiet brook of bliss. Mm. Can you feel that? The quiet brook 
of bliss. That's where he's taking you, right? That's where he restores and revives my life. Where do you need to be restored? Get the stores back. Where do you get need to be revived? Vive means life. Where do you need life infused back into you, right? Back to your place of life, right? He opens before me the pathways to God's pleasure. Ah, oh, here you go. This is the path to my pleasure. Why, I'm a happy God and I'm pleased with you. And I want you to experience my pleasure. Yeah. So that I can bring honor to his name. You know what? It honors God when we point to him as his good, kind, merciful, lovely person who takes pleasure in his kids. Yeah, that does him honor. Now, when we don't point that way and we're dishonoring God, is he less pleased with you? Okay, that's not supposed to be a trick question. Of course not. We're just not that powerful. He's pleased with you because you're his beloved child. He knows who you are. He also knows you're going to do stupid things. He knows you're going to dishonor him. So nobody freak. We're just not that powerful to um, to make him not pleased with who you are. Now, is there stuff we do that grieve him? Absolutely. When we hurt ourselves, when we hurt other people, obviously he's grieved. But that doesn't mean he's not pleased with who you are. Okay. So you've got this, this tension, right? Identity versus behavior, right? Okay. Lord, even when your paths take me through the deepest darkness, fear will never calm, conquer me for you already have. Get that? When there is paths, sometimes he takes us to dark places to deal with dark things, to bring light and healing, Right? Fear will not conquer me. Why? For you already have. Love has already conquered you, right? Love has conquered your heart. He's wooing your heart. And as, as love woos your heart, fear dissipates. It's like, oh, it's a shadow. What happened? It's gone. It's like darkness. You put the light on. It's like, it's gone. Where'd it go? Well, I guess it wasn't the real thing. Okay. That's another discussion. You remain close to me and lead me through it all the way. Your authority is my strength and my peace. Why he's authority, like he might know, like he is the E.F. Hutton of the cosmos. Okay, he probably, that's a, that dates me, but that's okay. I don't care. <laughs> um, the comfort of your love takes away my fear. <sighs> I don't need to be afraid. I'm good. Yeah, it's the comfort of your love, right? Love is a comforter. Love's a person, right? It's one of one of his slash her job descriptions is comforter. Don't you love it? I'll never be lonely for you or near. Why you're never alone? Why are you lonely? Oh, I guess you're real. You're you're blind to the fact he's you're one with him, based on what he's chosen, not based on what you chose, or not based on your performance. He's there, like you choose to go through dark places. He's right there. Where can I flee from your presence? Ooh, even if, if you make, if, even if I make my bed in the midst of hell, even you are there. Okay. You're there. He's there in your hell hole, right? Wake up, right? You become my delicious feast. Even when my enemies dare to fight, you anoint me with the fragrance of your Holy spirit. So he is your feast, right? In the presence of your enemies. Well, what's your enemies? Well, really, you know, we, we, we like to think people are our enemies and sometimes people act like our enemies, like they're out to kill you, rape you, destroy you, decimate you and laugh while they do it. Okay. I understand, but that's not really who they are. Right. So that's this anti spirit operating anti, uh, anti, anti demonic entity, however that is, um, and then if that's coming against you, you're like, yeah, sit down, have a meal. Partake of me 
And those other things, the voices like, where are you ready? I don't know where they went. They are gone. Why? Because he's truth. So anything that's anti-truth dissipates. Anything he's loved. So anti anything that's fear dissipates. He's the one that heals you and cleanses you. So anything that's mocking, shaming, lording over, he's Lord. That dissipates. Partake of him. And he's in you. He's your resting place, right? You anoint me with the fragrance of your Holy Spirit. This anointing is the, uh, the covering with oil. The fragrance of God that heals. That breaks the bondage and destroys the yoke. I'm actually in my right mind. How did that happen? It's the anointing of God. Who's one with you? Mm -hmm. You give me all I can drink of you until my heart overflows. This is partaking of him. Yeah, it's mystical. Like, so we're not going to wrap our brains around it. It's not logical, but it's true. We partake of him. We eat of him, eat and drink my, eat my body, drink my blood. What do you think that's all about? That's partaking of him, right? So why would I fear the future? It's like, what is this? Oh, you've already got, okay. Yeah, it's going to be okay. I can rest. I can rest as a beloved child whose daddy loves them well. He's the biggest thing in all the universe. He adores me. He's going to take care of me. He's going to provide for me. The lover of my soul, right? For your goodness and love, pursue me all the days of my life. Now, why do you think goodness and love pursue you? Because we're kind of clueless. <laughs> we're like, oh, there's so much bad. There's so much bad. There's so much fear. We're all going to die. It's like, wake up. My goodness is here. Yeah, I know bad things happen. I get it. Partake of my goodness and my love. That cuss up here is healing you. It's going to be okay. Good. Like, how did that happen? Yeah, it's because his goodness and love pursued me all the days of my life. And I like yielded to his pursuit. Then afterward, when my life is through on this side, because life is never through, really, because with eternal life, I'll return to your glorious presence to be with forever with you. Yeah, that's where you're going to end up returning to his glorious presence to awaken to it because his glorious presence is already here. But this is face to face, right? Right? To forever be with you. So there's a good ending to your story. Don't you love it? You can rest. You're adored and you're taken care of. I hope this blessed you. Have a great day. Bye bye.